I'm diving back into Avalanche DeFi. In this video, I'm going to go through why I think Avalanche is so interesting, including some of the many tech improvements they've made over the past year, some of the new partnerships they've announced where real world companies, including traditional finance firms and gaming studios, are building applications on Avalanche, and some of the opportunities for yield farming and airdrop farming in the Avalanche ecosystem right now. Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick. As a reminder, nothing in this video is financial advice. This is solely intended to be used for educational purposes. Now let's get into it. Before we get into the latest developments on Avalanche, first we need to give some context on what actually makes the Avalanche ecosystem unique from other DeFi and crypto ecosystems. And the most important thing to understand is that when people think about Avalanche in crypto, especially in DeFi, usually they're really thinking of the Avalanche C chain. And Avalanche C chain feels, looks very similar to Ethereum or Ethereum layer twos like Arbitrum, although with lower transaction fees than Ethereum itself. But if you go to Avalanche C chain, you'll have DeFi, you'll have NFTs, you'll have meme coins, you'll have all the things you're used to in crypto. But the important thing to know is that the Avalanche C chain is actually just one of dozens of chains that are built on Avalanche. The chains are called subnets and they're highly customizable and they might be tailor-made for gaming, tailor-made for finance, tailor-made for a traditional finance application, so on and so forth. And so Avalanche is really more comparable to something like Cosmos or Polkadot than it is to another chain that's simply a layer one because again avalanche has dozens of these subnets running for example you have some like shrapnel which is a game you have dex a lot which is a dex a perp dex you have beam which is for gaming we'll talk more about beam later and then you've got a whole bunch of other ones and and of course these have various varying levels of usage but the point is that avalanche is actually an ecosystem of all of these different chains and this is going to be important to understand for some of the developments we'll talk about in a minute. And at this point, Avalanche has had an active DeFi ecosystem since 2021. So they have a significant number of applications that are live on their network. You can see they have hundreds of applications on here, including dozens that have millions of dollars in total value locked. They have some very reputable applications from Ethereum itself, such as Aave and Uniswap, which are live on the chain. And then they have a number of battle-tested Avalanche native applications like Banky, Trader Joe, and GMX that have been live since 2021. And as I was researching Avalanche, one of the things that stood out to me is that they've made a ton of tech improvements over the past year to make it easier for developers to launch these subnets. And this fits with a larger trend that we've talked about a lot on this channel as it relates to crypto, which is this move towards modular chains and this move towards app chains. And that's especially true for something like gaming, for example, where you might have millions or tens of millions of microtransactions a day in a game, and you really need the transaction fees to be super low for those microtransactions. And you also probably don't want the user of that game, the game player's experience, to be affected by other unrelated things that might be happening on the chain, right? For example, imagine if you had two games on a chain and one was suddenly getting a surge in traffic, you wouldn't want you wouldn't want transactions to the other game to become more expensive or you wouldn't want that other game to stop working simply because because some other application was getting getting usage right imagine if you couldn't watch youtube because instagram was getting a lot of traffic and then similarly you also have this move towards needing highly customized permissions chains for institutional investors or traditional finance institutions that want to dive into blockchain and crypto, but they have to also be heavily compliant. And so Avalanche makes all this possible with their subnets. And one of the solutions that they've come out with, or rather a team has come out with building on Avalanche is GoGoPool. And GoGoPool is a liquid staking platform, but it also lets people launch validator nodes for cheaper. They only need 1000 AVEX as opposed to 2000 AVEX that you would normally need. And GoGoPool makes it easier for teams to launch validators for their own subnets, first because you can launch it cheaper, and second because they make it easy for teams to airdrop tokens to other validators to recruit them into their new subnet validator set. And so that's the first solution that's making it easier. The second is Ava Cloud. Ava Cloud is a managed blockchain service that basically lets people 
deploy subnets within a few minutes. And they advertise here that those new subnets can have 50,000 plus transactions per second, which is believable based on the transactions per second that some of these gaming subnets on Avalanche are putting up. And so again, they're building infrastructure for a future where you have hundreds or even thousands of teams that are launching their own subnets on Avalanche, just building those network effects, building out the entire ecosystem of subnets on Avalanche, and potentially launching a subnet as easily as you could actually launch a website. Another piece of technology that's going to make it much more appealing for teams building app chains or, or um, other customized chains to build on Avalanche is they recently launched their own cross-chain messaging protocol. This is called Avalanche Warp messaging. And so this basically allows any Ethereum compatible chain on the network to seamlessly communicate with each other. And this is really big because one of the ideas behind subnets is that you could have an application that launched on the Avalanche C chain, which is probably the network that most people are using, at least most crypto native people. But then the application might outgrow it. And this, what this does is they could then move that application to its own custom subnet but they would still be able to seamlessly communicate with other, other uh, applications and chains or other subnets in the Avalanche ecosystem. And the result of all these technological improvements is that you've had some seriously impressive companies that are starting to build their own custom subnets. Recently, a few months ago, we had this announcement that JP Morgan and Wisdom Tree were actually working on a solution on Avalanche. And Again, like we talked about previously, these subnets can be really powerful for institutional investors because they allow them to build things like permissioned access and KYC that they would need to be fully compliant. And maybe you're against that for yourself because you like to use crypto. Personally, I use permissionless blockchains mostly, but the fact of the matter remains that, that eventually these institutions are going to want to build things in blockchain and they're probably going to look for some sort of solution like this. In another piece of institutional adoption, you had City launch a 4X project on Avalanche, and they launched this through something known as Project Guardian, which is an initiative by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. And you can see here that they are launching private permissioned Avalanche Evergreen subnets. And basically for the current phase, it's to capture price quotes. But Again, good news that you have these various companies choosing to launch on Avalanche. And then in another piece of news, Republic selected Avalanche blockchain for its investment security token. So this traditional finance institution is piloting a tokenized investment fund called Republic Note, and they are using Avalanche to do it. You've also had a ton of adoption in the gaming sector. Just recently, you had this very well-known MMORPG Maple Story announced that they were building their own Avalanche subnet. You've had Beam, which is a network focused around crypto gaming built by Merit Circle, which is kind of this crypto native decentralized organization for, for building crypto games. And that's on Avalanche as well. This is Beam has its own subnet. And then you've had many other games from experienced teams launching on their own subnets, such as shrapnel. So there's a lot going on both in the realms of finance and gaming. And I think one interesting thing about this is that these are very different, right? You've got the institutional investors and you've got the gaming, but they both fit together in that they are real world adoption. That's not driven by speculation. That's not driven by people just wanting to trade crypto. They're actually using the technology on blockchain. And I feel like that's a common theme that you see with some of these projects building on Avalanche. And I already know what people are going to say. You're thinking, but Patrick, I am crypto native. I do want to speculate. I want to use DeFi. I want to earn yield. I want to earn airdrops. Well, there's opportunities to do that on Avalanche as well. As with basically every ecosystem, a good place to start is you can go to DeFi Llama and look at which applications are built on Avalanche. But I've also picked out some that I think are interesting opportunities that I'm interested in personally. First, the major decks on Avalanche is Trader Joe, and that's going to be a good place to earn some basic yield on tokens as well as to trade. And for example, you can see here the APRs are extremely high right now because there's been a lot of activity on the network. 
For example, you can provide yield on AVAX USDC, wrapped ETH AVAX, so on and so forth. I used to be in a lot of pools like this. Now I mostly stick to things that you don't have the risk of impermanent loss, such as S AVAX and AVAX, where you are basically just pairing liquid staking token with, with the network token and earning yield all the while. Trader Joe is also cool because it has this really easy to use interface for providing concentrated liquidity where you can choose the shape of the liquidity you want to use and very easily move around the price that you're providing liquidity on. And so this is one of the things that I think is, is pretty interesting. There's some good stable coin pools as well. There's also some pairs that might have higher risk of impermanent loss but also have higher risk of rewards, such as pairing meme coins on the network with AVAX itself. Another good application to know about is Banky. Banky is the leading money market and the leading liquid staking solution on Avalanche. And so you can stake your AVAX through Banky and start earning some yield on it, or you can provide your AVAX as collateral and actually borrow against it or earn some yield from lending. So for example, you can lend out your S AVAX, that's the liquid staked AVAX through Banky, and you only earn a relatively small amount of yield, right? When you add up supply and distribution APR, it's around 2%. However, you could then borrow against it and maybe farm with those stable coins or otherwise use those stable coins in the Avalanche DeFi ecosystem. Another staple of the Avalanche DeFi ecosystem is Yield Yak. Yield Yak is, I remember it back from 2021, it was it's kind of the, the OG yield aggregator in the Avalanche ecosystem. They're going to have a ton of pools for earning yield. You can see the most popular pools here. You can see the APR. You can see the stablecoin yield. Uh, you can see yield specifically just for AVAX itself. There's also a few opportunities for earning yield that also could potentially earn you airdrops. One of these is Struct Finance. This is, as the name suggests, structured finance products. And basically, these are fixed yield products with various pools on GMX and Trader Joe. You can see, for example, this SAVAX AVAX pool has a fixed yield of 15%. However, in order to make that work, these pools have limited space available and you would deposit into these tranches. And so, for example, this pool right now has a fixed yield of 15%. However, it is currently full. You can see, right, is it filled up. It only has 4,289 AVAX available in this, in this particular vault. And so you got to kind of keep an eye for when these open up if you want to deposit in them. Additionally, Struct has a point system and leaderboard. So as we talk about in this channel, points means there's likely going to be some sort of airdrop in the future, and you can earn those airdrops by depositing into there into their various vaults. So I think Struct is, is a pretty good opportunity both for yield and airdrop farming. Another interesting one right now is Delta Prime. Delta Prime is a platform that allows you to take out under collateralized loans and then use the borrowed funds in yield farming. And so for example, they have some, have some uh, examples here you deposit wrapped ETH, borrow 4X the die, swap both to GMX, and then provide yield to Beefy and then rest, you know, relax. Or another one, you deposit AVAX USDC GM, borrow 4X AVAX and USDC, mint GM, stay Delta neutral, etc. And the reason they can do this is that the funds are all ultimately staying on the platform. And so you are depositing into Delta Prime and then you're borrowing from Delta Prime, and then you're using those funds, you're depositing these funds into these various vaults, but they're ultimately all still staying within Delta Prime itself. And Delta Prime also doesn't have a token yet, so again, I think it could be a good opportunity to airdrop farm. Another interesting application is Hubble Exchange. Hubble Exchange is a perp trading dex on Avalanche. Right now they have ETH, AVAX, SOL. You can trade these tokens with leverage on Avalanche, and so if you like to trade, you might want to check out Hubble as well. And then finally, I think this is an interesting airdrop farming opportunity is this application known as Lever Bet. This is a decentralized leverage sports betting application building on Avalanche. 
so you can bet on sports or you will be able to once they launch and uh, you'll be able to do so with leverage and also they don't have a token yet and so this could be a good opportunity to airdrop farm if you want to dive in more to the thesis behind avalanche as well as the avalanche DeFi ecosystem i published this in-depth report in my premium Substack a couple months ago it goes through all the things we talked about today plus much more i'll link it down in the description for those of you who might be interested and for more videos like this one be sure to like and subscribe until next time this is dynamo DeFi.